Hello everyone. Today I'm going to start a lecture on the course Computer System Architecture. This course is required for all computer science and engineering students at Al Balqa Applied University. The prerequisite for this course is the digital design course. I published videos on the topics of the digital design course, so you can watch any of these videos on any topic you need to. In both courses, digital design and computer system architecture, the main textbook used is the well-known Morris Mano textbook. And in this course, I will follow the topics covered in the Mano textbook. The first three chapters in the computer system architecture are a comprehensive revision of the material covered in the digital design course. Some instructors skip these three chapters and leave them for self-reading by the students. I will allocate one lecture for revision the material in these chapters. The topics covered in the first chapter are introduction to digital computers, logic gates, Boolean algebra, map simplification, combinational circuits, flip-flops, sequential circuits. As you know, the digital computer is a digital system that performs various computational tasks. Digital computers use the binary number system, which has two digits, zero and one. A binary digit is called a bit. A computer system is sometimes subdivided into two functional entities, hardware and software. The hardware of the computer consists of all the electronic components and electromechanical devices that comprise the physical entity of the device. Computer software consists of the instructions and data that the computer manipulates to perform various data processing tasks. A sequence of instructions for the computer is called a program. The hardware of the computer is usually divided into three major parts. CPU, central processing unit, RAM, random access memory, and input-output processor with the input-output devices connected to it. The central processing unit, or CPU, contains arithmetic logic unit plus control unit and a number of registers for storing data. The function of the arithmetic logic unit is to perform the required arithmetic and logic operations. And the function of the control unit is to control the operation of the system. RAM contains storage for instructions and data. It can be considered as an array of registers or locations. It is called a random access memory because the CPU can access any location in memory at random and retrieve the binary information within a fixed interval of time. The input-output processor contains electronic circuits for communicating and controlling the transfer of information between the computer and the outside world, input devices and output devices. The input and output devices connected to the computer include keyboards, printers, terminals, magnetic disks, and other communication devices. Next, we are going to speak about the difference between organization, design, and architecture. When dealing with the computer hardware, it is necessary to distinguish between what is referred to computer organization, computer design, and computer architecture. First, Computer design is concerned with the hardware design of the computer. Once the computer specifications are formulated, it is the task of the designer to develop hardware for the system. Computer design is concerned with the determination of what hardware should be used and how the parts should be connected. This aspect of computer hardware is sometimes referred to as computer implementation. Computer organization is concerned with the way the hardware components operate and the way they are connected together 
to form the computer system. The various components are assumed to be in place, and the task is to investigate the organizational structure to verify that the computer parts operate as intended. Computer architecture is concerned with the structure and behavior of the computer as seen by the user. It includes the information, formats, the instruction set, and techniques for addressing memory. The architectural design of a computer system is concerned with the specification of the various functional modules, such as processors and memories, and the structuring them together into a computer system. There are two basic types of computer architectures, John von Neumann architecture and Harvard architecture. A Neumann architecture describes a general framework or structure that a computer's hardware, programming, and data should follow. Components of Neumann machine are arithmetic logic unit, RAM, control unit, man-machine interface. An example of computer architecture based on the Newman architecture is the desktop personal computer. The Harvard architecture uses physically separate storage and signal pathways for their instructions and data. In a computer with Harvard architecture, the CPU can read both an instruction and data from memory at the same time, leading to double the memory bandwidth. Microcontroller, single chip microcomputer, and digital signal processor based computer systems are examples for Harvard architecture. The main difference between the two architectures, suppose that we have here the RAM, the CPU. So in a Newman architecture, we have one pathway between the RAM and the CPU. And, and both instructions and data are stored in the RAM. This is a Newman machine. However, according to Harvard architecture, we have a separate memory for data and memory for instructions. And we have two pathways. So at the same time of reading an instruction, data can be stored or read from data memory. This is Harvard architecture. Newman architecture is classified as non-impeded system, while Harvard is classified as impeded system. Most of the general purpose computers are more close to Newman architecture. Both instructions and data are stored in binary form in RAM. Instructions are executed sequentially. First, the instruction is fetched, then decoded in the CPU, executed, and data is stored in memory if needed. This concept is called the stored program concept, again developed by John von Neumann in 1951, published 1952. So almost all modern computers follow the stored program concept. According to this principle, stored program concept, again, both instructions and data are stored in memory. Instructions are carried out sequentially, one instruction at a time. The sequential execution of programming imposes a sort of speed limit on a program execution compared with the Harvard architecture, since only one instruction at a time can be handled by the computer's processor. This means that the CPU can be either reading an instruction or reading, writing data from to the memory. Both cannot occur at the same time since the instructions and data use the same signal pathways and memory. 
The next topic in this comprehensive revision chapter is the logic gates. You already know that there are three basic logic gates and or not, and the set of additional or secondary logic gates such as NAND, NOR, XOR, equivalence, or XNOR. Again, here is the truth table for the AND. The output of the AND gate is one or true only if both the inputs are true, while the output of the OR gate is true if any of the inputs is true. The inverter is used to complement the variable. So if we have zero in the input, then we'll have here one and vice versa. Uh, the buffer just transfers the signal. Regarding the NAND gate, first the inputs are ANDed, then complemented. And this is equals according to De Morgan law, not A or not B. And this gate is equivalent to, as you know, inverted OR. Regarding NOR, first the variables are OR, then complemented. And this is the truth table for the NOR operation. And this is equals to not A and not B. And this gate is equivalent to inverted AND. Regarding the XOR, it is one if the two variables are different, and it is zero if they are equal. And this is the Boolean expression A, not B, or not A, B, for the exclusive OR. And usually, we use the XOR symbol like that. The complement of XOR is the exclusive NOR or equivalence gate. The output equals to one if the inputs are equal. And it is A, B or not A, not B. This is the equivalence operation. These are the basic and secondary logic gates used to implement any logic circuit. Next, the basic identities of Boolean algebra. Here we have the zero low, x or zero equals x, and x and zero equals zero. And the one low, x or one equals one, x and with one equals x. The identity x or x equals x, x and x equals x. And the inverse law, x or not x equals one, and x and with not x equals zero, since one of them will be zero. Commutative law, x or y equals y or x, and x and y equals y and x. Associative law, x or y, z equals x or y or z. And for the AND operation, x and it with y, z equals to x, y, all and it with z. Next, Distributive law, x and it with y or z equals x, y or x, z, and x or with y, z equals x or y, x or z. Next, De Morgan's theorems, x or y or not equals not x and it would not y, and x and y or not equals not x or with not y. Or you can write them in this way. x and y or not equals not x 
or not y or even for three variables x or y or z or not equals not x and not y and not z and it's very easy to prove the validity of the Morgan's theorems by mean of a truth table or Venn diagrams. And the last double negation, not x complemented twice equals to x. A Boolean function can be expressed algebraically with binary variables, the logic operation symbols, parentheses, and equal sign. For example, the function f equals x or not y, z. Here is the truth table for this function. As you see, the function equals 1 if x equals 1. Here are the four cases. And on this case, when y0, z1. y0, z1 here. And this is the circuit diagram for the function f here we first complement y here and here we have not y z and we or it with x to obtain the function f really the function here is in its minimal form since we cannot reduce the function anymore regarding the standard form if all the variables are included in each term, then the function is in its standard or canonical form. Here the function f is in the standard form since in each term we have the variables a, b, c. But the form here is non-standard since, for example, we have in here the variable c and, and a and b here. And we can convert from non-standard form to standard form. Do you see here not a b? The missing variable is c. So we can multiply not a b with c or not c, which is one. And here not c can be multiplied by a or not a, which is one, and b or not b one. And by using the laws of logic algebra, we can obtain the standard form of the function. The function expressed in the standard form can be written as sum of min terms. Here the function sum of min terms 0, 1, 1, min term 3, 0, 1, 0, min term 2, 1, 1, 0, min term 6, one zero zero four and here zero 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 in term zero and one 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 in term seven to find the complement of the function f if we have the truth table we just interchange ones and zeros in the values of f in the truth table or from the general de morgan's theorem we can derive a simple procedure for obtaining the complement of the function. This is the first and the second de Morgan's laws, and they can be used to find the complement of the function. As you see here, you can just replace the AND operation by OR, and the OR operation by AND, and invert the variable. For example, if we have A, B, or not C, D, or B, C, then the complement is not A or not B. Here the AND is replaced by OR. Not C, not D. C or D, and this OR here is changed to AND. B or not D. Again, if, for example, I have a function a not B or not C D, we can obtain the complement of F directly here A 
not A or B and C or not D. In this way, also you can convert from a product of some form to some of product form or vice versa. Next, regarding minimization of logic functions, minimization is very important since we reduce the cost, the complexity of the circuit, we need less number of gates to implement the circuit in addition to saving the power and reducing the heat from the circuit. There are several known methods for minimization logic functions, laws of logic algebra, Venn diagrams, K-maps, and using table method or known as QM method. K-maps are powerful if the number of variables is five and this, but if the number of variables is more than six, then working with the K-maps will be difficult. In this case, it's better to use the QM method, which is a programmable method, and, and I have published videos on K-maps and QM methods. First, using laws of logic algebra, how to minimize this function, as you see, z equals here a and it with a, or a not b c, or a not b, or not b and it would not b c, or a not C or not B not C C which is equals to A or A not B C or A not B here not B or not B C or a not C, and here we have zero. Do you see, since we have here A, and here A, and here A, and here A, so this is equals A, one, or not B, C, or not B, or not C, or not B, C. A and it would one A or not B C. As you see, implementing the circuit using this simplified expression is less in cost and complexity than implementing it using this expression. Next, regarding K maps, K map can be described as a special arrangement of truth table. The number of squares in the K map equals to the number of main terms. So if we have n variable function, then the number of squares is equal to to the power n squares in the map. For two variables, we have four squares, four, three, eight squares, as you see here. Four variables, we have 16 squares, etc. Each mean term is assigned one square. Here M0, M1, M2, M3. In the three variable map, M0, M1, M2 here, M3, four, five, six, seven. And in the four variable map, mean term zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. As you know, min terms are arranged in this way so that these two squares are neighbors, are adjacent, so we can group them together. But if we put here B not C and here B C, this is wrong arrangement since these squares will not be adjacent.
as you see in a three variable map, these four squares represent not A and these four A. Here we have the B squares, here the B squares, and here not B, and here we have the C squares, and here the not C. In the seminar, here we have in the four variable map, the X square is not A, and this A. As you see here, this H squares in the middle represents B, and the first four squares with the last four squares represent not B. And this H squares represent D, and this A together, not D. The last two columns represent C, and the first two columns represent not C. Suppose, for example, that we have the function f sum of min terms 0, 1, 2, 4, 5. And here we have zeros. We can group this four together, not B, or, and these two together, with not A, not C. And suppose that we have the function for four variables. Here, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So we can group these four together on not C, D, or, and these four together on C, not D, or, the remaining two ones here. It's wrong to take them alone. We can't take them this way. So we have not B, not D. Suppose we have the function sum of terms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 11, 13, 14. The best way to group is, for example, these four together, f equals here, not a, d, or this one can be grouped only on this way, not a, b, not c, or this one can be grouped only, again, on this way, b, not C, D, or this one cannot be grouped with anything, A, B, C, not D, or again, this one cannot be grouped with anything, A, not B, not C, not D, or this one can be grouped here, in this way. So we write not B, C, D. This is the minimal form of this function. For example, we have the function sum of min terms 0, 1, 3, here, and 6, here. But we have do not care conditions, for example, on min term plus do not care condition on min term here, seven. This is how to, so the, we can group these two together with not A, not B, or this one, we can take it on this way or with the do not care which is again not A, C, or, and this one, with this do not care, A, B. And as another example, with do not care conditions, suppose that we have the function of four variables, 
equals sum of min terms 0 1 2 4 5 8 9 12 and 15 and suppose that the min terms 6 13 and 14 are do not care conditions here we have zeros as you see we can group this eight together on not C or we have remaining this one and this one this one we can group it in this way a b or and the remaining this one we can group it in this way not a not d so this is the function on its minimal form if we take benefit of the do not care conditions as i mentioned earlier k maps are efficient if the number of variables is less than five and if the number of variables is more than five you can use the table or qm method for simplifying the boolean function today i'll stop here we need one additional meeting to cover the material presented in chapter one and if you have any difficulties, you can watch the previously published videos on the digital design course. Thank you.